Okay, today we're going to walk through how to configure a mold profiler for an oven run. And in order to do this, we'll need the profiler itself. And if possible, um, go ahead and grab your assembly board that your thermocouples are attached to. And so if we can, we'll want to have the thermocouples plugged in to the profiler uh, when we set up this configuration. And I'll show you why here in a moment. But once you have those things, go ahead and plug in the USB cable from your computer to the profiler. And that will load this autoplay pop-up uh, if you have anything newer than the Super Mole Gold. And we can go ahead and select Start Mole Map. This is going to launch the software for us. Once it loads up, go ahead and click on the Mole drop-down menu at the top and select Setup Instrument. The computer will go out and search for your instrument and load up the first screen of our setup here. And so if your profiler is new or if you haven't changed the name before, it may just have the default serial number in there. Uh, but you can enter in your company name. Or if you use multiple profilers from ECD, you can also name it Mole1, Mole2, etc. And one of the most important things uh, that we have here on this page is the recording interval. And 99% of the time, you'll want the recording interval to be uh, set for one second logging. And so if you use different applications uh, at your facility there, it may get changed from time to time. But basically, just verify that you have one second logging. and that all six of your channels are active. And in this case, I'm uh, setting up a Super Mole Gold 2, and so it's a six channel profiler. If you have the Mega Mole, that's going to be a 20 channel profiler. Uh, but the original Super Mole Gold was a six channel as well. And then, our, of course, our V Mole would just have three channels here. But uh, right now, you can see those are all switched on, and it's just got a default name for each channel. And so one thing we can do here uh, to change this, once we uh, select Next, if you'd like to name your uh, channels, for example, if you have, um, if you know that sensor 1 is going to be measuring a, a resistor on the board, or that uh, sensor 2 is attached to a BGA chip, uh, you can name the appropriate uh, sensor locations on this assembly information. And so, for example, if you have um, a certain board that you're measuring, we'll call this um, Motherboard 79. And you may have already um, taken a picture of the motherboard and have that saved on the computer, which is really handy here just for convenience. Um, let's say that you have a picture, you can click on the image file. And I have a picture of motherboard 79 here, top down view. And we can click on that and open it up from wherever you saved it on the computer. So this is really handy. It loads in an image of what you're uh, profiling, what you're measuring. And let's say, for example, that uh, this resistor 105 that I've set up here for sensor 1 is towards the bottom of the board. Well, uh, that starts at 0 from the top right, and y, the larger uh, that value, the further down the board it goes. And so since I have a width on the board of 8 inches, I can take my y value, let's say it's 7.5 inches down the board. Now you'll notice that this sensor location has moved, and so that um, you can give yourself a visual cue as to where that is. And uh, it can be very handy. But you can save this if you're going to come back and measure or profile Motherboard 79 at a later time as well. And so uh, that's uh, the basics of the assembly information. And once you're happy with those uh, settings, you can go ahead and click Next. This will send the data to your mole for the configuration of the one-second logging and your assembly information. 
and this is where it's handy to have your thermal couples plugged in uh, to your instrument that are also attached to your assembly board because this will let you know if you have an open channel. Uh, for example, if my fourth channel's thermal couple was open, um, even though it's attached to the board with capped on tape or soldered on, um, this would be highlighted in big red letters saying open right here. And so that we, we know now that since um, it's just measuring ambient temperature on my desk here, that all six channels thermal couples are good to go. We have the green light for our pre-flight checkout. Um, you can review other instrument status uh, information here, like the last time your uh, profiler was calibrated, uh, double check your log interval, and the instrument date, and a bunch of other things as well. But um, once you're happy with that and you get the green go light, go ahead and click finish. And that is how you uh, set up an instrument for profiling. Now, one thing I want to go back into real quick here, if we select the mold drop down, and set up instrument. Some people uh, want to have their profiling start recording on a positive slope. For example, if you uh, want your recording to start right when the temperature in the oven or, uh, that the profiler is measuring reaches 50 degrees C. Uh, this Again, this first page of the setup instrument screen, we can click on the more button and we have start parameters on the left side. And if you want to enter a start parameter on the temperature for a positive slope to start recording when it reaches 50 C, you can set that here. Um, there's also delay points. And so if you want the instrument to wait a full minute and then start recording, you would put in 60 delay points for the one second logging. So it would wait one minute before it starts recording. If you want to have the instrument uh, stop recording after a certain amount of time, you can enter the stop parameters here. Um, let's say after three minutes we want the instrument to stop recording. We can enter 180 data points, which is uh, with our one second logging that comes out to three minutes. And so some of the more advanced features uh, you can activate with that more button on the first screen of your setup. And one other thing that I didn't go over um, that we'll touch on real quick is this button in the bottom right of the first screen. Uh, if you use our product with a oven rider palette, for example, or a wave rider, um, we have some pre-configurations that you can uh, make life real easy on yourself setting this up for an oven rider. So we just click the oven rider button and if you notice the, um, the channels have all been named for the appropriate locations on the oven rider. And so if we click next here you'll notice that um, the software knows that these sensors one through three are going to be the ambient sensors in an oven rider palette and of course uh, four through six are the process sensors and so uh, it makes things really handy if you're uh, using one of our other products with it and so